And welcome to Advantage Radio Ministries and welcome to Second Chances here at Lift FM. My name is Greg Hennis and this is our weekly program where we are honored to bring on people from all throughout the country, all walks of life, actually all throughout the world. We've had uh, guests on from uh, England and, and Europe and different places. Today we have an author with us. His name is Boyd Bailey. He is the founder of Wisdom Hunters, an Atlanta-based ministry that encourages Christians to live out God's unchanging truth in a changing world. He's also the author of many devotional books and e-books, and he's also the co-founder and CEO of Ministry Ventures, where he's coached more than 1,000 groups in media, uh, actually in, in ministry models, uh, administration, fundraising, and a whole bunch more. So today we're going to be visiting with Boyd. The book we're going to talk about, the devotional in particular, is entitled Two Minutes in the Bible for Men. And Boyd, thank you very much for joining us here on Second Chances. Yeah, you're welcome, Greg. It's a pleasure to be with you. And we always like to start off our interview to kind of get to know our, our guest a little bit. Uh, why don't you give us a little bit of background on yourself beyond what I mentioned, maybe, uh, you know, about uh, where you were raised and things like that. And maybe you could kind of take us through how you uh, uh, found Jesus to be the Lord of your life. Yes, would love to be honored. Uh, we've been in Atlanta since 1989, but I actually grew up in a small town in Alabama in a sp- single-parent home, and I was fortunate to have some good role models as men uh, who invested in me. I had a neighbor that had a little service business, and he allowed me to work for him. He eventually sold me the business, which was kind of cool, so I learned a lot about responsibility and relationships and hard work, these types of things. And then the best thing that ever happened to me, there was a family in our little town that, as far as I knew, they had the only ping-pong table around. So I would ride my bicycle over as a 13-year-old. And their evangelism was they loved each other so so beautifully, and they loved me unconditionally. And uh, the more I got to know this family, I thought, well, I want to... I don't know what it is about them, but I want this is the kind of family I want one day. And so as a freshman in college, I started dating uh, one of their daughters. Uh, her name is Rita, who's my wife now, 37 years. And her, her dad said, well, if you're going to date Rita, you have to go to church with us. And I thought, well, I need to know how to do business with church people. She's cute. So I started attending for the first time in college. And, and Greg, as you know, the gospel just melted my heart and really brought me to the foot of the cross, and I really felt a conviction to receive Jesus and follow him wholeheartedly, and I was fortunate. I had a businessman in the church that discipled me and two of my friends for two years, so I felt like I had a very strong um, foundation and felt a call to ministry soon after that. Um, Went off to graduate school, uh, received my Master's of Theology, my MDiv, and um, felt like there was a professor in seminary that said, you have a gift for writing, you should develop that. And then a few years later, I was working out of seminary with Andy Stanley and his dad, Dr. Stanley, here in Atlanta. And Andy gave me opportunities and his dad to do some ghost writing. And then in 2003, I just started writing these devotionals uh, each day, kind of what God was teaching me, and it's just kind of grown over the years. Mm. Now, obviously, uh, as we alluded to uh, Boyd uh, in the beginning, you're quite involved in, in men's ministries. Um, why the the calling do you feel in your life toward the, the ministries for men? You know, I, I truly do love men, and there's a couple of men's retreats that I'm a regular uh, server and speaker. One is called Solely Business, Doing Business on Your Soul. It's kind of a Trace Diaz environment for men, and I've done, really, I've served in about 16 of those now, and I, I just, um, I know that because I had mentors along the way, even though I still struggled and made mistakes, I feel like I made less mistakes. And when I did struggle, I had these men come alongside me. And so I think one of the the deceptions that are out there from the enemy is, is to think, well, for a man, a man and God are a majority. And I don't really think that's good theology. I think the way God designed us it was to be in accountability and to be in community. And so I'm I'm really a big proponent on talking a lot about finishing well, and what does it look like to finish well? And accountability, my definition of accountability is allowing other people to stick their nose into our business. So I'm truly not accountable unless I've submitted to a friend or a group of friends to say, you know, you have permission to ask me whatever you'd like to ask. And so um, 
and, and now I have four son-in-laws, so it's it's really cool. I stole this idea from a guy. I have a every six weeks or so we have a conference call with all the son-in-laws together, and they came up with three questions: What's the Lord teaching you? What are you learning from your family? And what's your biggest challenge at work? We can pray for you about. So I I just think as men, if we can be intentional with one another, you know, we need each other. We need each other's prayers, and we need each other's love and support. We're visiting today with Boyd Bailey. He is the author of the devotional Two Minutes in the Bible for Men. And Boyd, what would you say are, are some of the common struggles and concerns that impact men today? You know, speaking from my own experience, um, I think pride and self-reliance are kind of my primary struggles at the core. And I've really tried to make it a habit over the years to learn what it means to grow in humility. I I like what Augustine says, that humility is the mother of all virtues, and I think it is the, the best remedy against pride is really learning what it means to submit to God and His mission and purpose in our life, to, uh, to understand how to esteem others better than myself and to serve others without expecting anything in return. And So um, as men, if we can be honest about our own struggle with self-reliance and pride and, and really say, Wow, you know, even the Lone Ranger had Tonto. You know, we all need somebody uh, in our life. And so uh, once men get beyond that particular uh, struggle, I think then we're open to receive God's grace and to receive the support of a uh, you know, loving community. And, and, I, and I guess one other struggle I would talk, because this was, again, in my own life, was for a lot of years I was very driven to make money because growing up kind of in a lower class family I thought well I'm not going to be like that when I'm an adult I really want to work hard and provide for my family but it, instead of being a godly ambition it was more driven by greed and so after I became a Christian it took a lot of time to kind of work that out uh, through a Bible study called Crown Ministries I got very involved with my wife through that and uh, helped us get a biblical perspective that we're to manage God's resources and to be good stewards but not to be motivated by money, and then again, generosity, I think, building a system of generosity into our lives over the years has really helped to combat greed, because that's another struggle, I think, that we have as men. Often I have guests on, and they will talk about uh, giving and uh, giving to others, and they, they talk about, uh, most of them will, will bring up the point that by the fact that they've become givers, that it's helped uh, them to take their, their eyes off of themselves and put on others. Did you find that to be the case as well? Absolutely true, and and there, there's probably a person out there that's generous, that's not joyful, but I haven't met them yet. <laughs> and, I, and I think that's the beautiful thing, Greg, is the joy of generosity. When we practice that, it is more blessed to give than to receive. The receiver's blessed, the giver's blessed even additionally. And so, yes, you know, and then the old saying, you can't outgive God, it's it's just such a faith builder when we go out and trust Him, maybe in a larger gift than we're used to giving, and then watch him provide in ways that we hadn't thought of. Mm. Now, obviously, one of the, the most important things that a, a person can do when they begin their walk with the Lord is to spend time in the Word. And with that in mind, uh, Boyd, how do you encourage men who think that, boy, I'm just so busy between work and uh, spending time with the family, taking kids to this place or that place, how am I going to have time to commit to reading Scripture? How do you answer that, and how do you encourage men to get off of that thinking? Yeah, it's a very legitimate concern and a very real, you know, real struggle. And I think it's a matter of our worldview and kind of our perspective. And so, one thing I try to communicate is, literally, if we knew we'd received a personal letter in the mail from somebody that really cared for us, that was giving us instruction on how we could be a better person, and how to live our life in a way that was uh, going to be a productive, you know, good life. If we knew someone like that was writing us a letter, even a love letter, I like to say, you know, the Lord, the Lord has personalized the Scripture for every one of His children, and by us taking the time to reflect on it, to listen to His heart, to pray over it, and again, it doesn't have to be large chunks of time. It's, it's kind of like when we uh, gas up our car. I mean, to me... Uh, stopping and getting quiet before the Lord is like God's grace filling our spiritual tank, so to speak. And so it's an investment. I like to compare our time of the Lord to dollar cost averaging with money. It's You don't always see the investment immediately when we start 
saving on a regular basis. That maybe out of our paycheck, a certain amount comes out. But over time, that interest compounds. And I think it's the same with our spiritual investments. When we commit Scripture to memory, when we are in Bible study with others, or we just get it quiet to to listen to God, then that compounds over time. And I like to say, Greg, that we need silence in our life to manage the noise. Otherwise, the noise manages us. Mm. One of the, the things that says here on your, your release that I received that says, uh, Boyd Bailey, uh, ministry leader, compels men to start each day with life-changing biblical wisdom. Um, why do you feel that men need that biblical wisdom to, to start their day? Because that's obviously, you know, if you start your day right, it probably is going to finish a lot better than it would have had you not. Yes, my short answer to that is it works. You know, it just really works when we when we seek uh, wisdom from above and try to follow God's game plan. That's the best game plan, and it works not not always to perfection in our own thinking, but it gets us down the path of God's will, which is what's best for everyone. The other way I like to illustrate illustrate that is when I was in my early thirties, thirty one. Uh, there was a man who worked for our church. He was the church administrator, and he worked for a dollar a year. And I thought, that is very interesting. I've never met a man that could work for a dollar a year. And, and his family was very strong and loved each other and, you know, good marriages. And, and, I mean, he had issues. He had problems. But overall, I just really admired and respected his walk with the Lord. And so I took him to lunch one day, and I had my yellow legal pad. You remember those, the, the yellow legal pad? And mm-hmm. I said, George... Give me your wisdom. I want to learn from you. How have you been able to live your life in such a fashion and that's been not so honoring to the Lord and so wise? And he's, he, he was very humble, and he said, oh, Boyd, I really don't know other than for a period of 10 years, I would read a proverb every day based on the day of the month, 31 chapters in Proverbs, 31 days in the month. And he said it was uncanny how I was facing an issue about finances or about relationships or about making a hard decision. And the scripture would give me insight into the best decision. And he said, I think that investment of time really changed my life. And so as a 31-year-old, I missed some days, but I also committed over the next 10 years to do do the same. And then coming out of that 10 years is when I started writing the the Wisdom Hunters. Mm. Uh, Obviously, the the Bible, uh, Boyd, contains uh, and actually covers so many critical areas of of life and pertaining to it how do you determine which topics in your in your books and, and devotionals to to feature you know having been in small groups with married couples and in accountability groups with men the last 30 years there, there, there do seem to be some themes that pop up kind of broad themes like for instance forgiveness and i think it's interesting that the kind of the centrality of the Christian message is the cross. It is forgiveness, but yet, as followers of Jesus, uh, for whatever reasons, we can drift into, you know, passive-aggressive behavior, pride, uh, either not humbling ourselves and asking for forgiveness or not forgiving others, thinking that we can somehow punish them if we don't forgive them, when, when in reality we're the ones that are kind of dying on the inside from bitterness. And so... Forgiveness is a strong one, and I had to experience that with my dad, who left my, my two brothers and myself when when I was five. And and um, but over the years before he died, I, I was able to build back that relationship. It took twenty years, and it took a lot of ongoing forgiveness. It just wasn't a one-time decision; it was a process. And so, these themes like forgiveness, and like humility, and like generosity, and accountability, I think. Uh, those those themes, if through God's grace and through some spiritual disciplines like prayer and Bible study, we can begin to grow those disciplines in our life in a, in a, in a grace-based way, in a, in a loving way, and then express those to others. We are visiting with Boyd Bailey. He is the author of the devotional Two Minutes in the Bible for Men, a 90-day devotional. And Boyd, if someone is listening to this program today, and would like to learn uh, more about you or obtain a copy of this devotional or any previous material that you've released, is there a website that one could visit? Yes, absolutely, wisdomhunters.com, and they can join. There's over 170,000 readers now, either through email, the app, or social media, 
and there's a lot of free resources. The Daily Devotional, I still write them, and they're free. Uh, last summer, I, I added uh, my son-in-law, Tripp. He's a millennial, so he writes one a week. And then Shanna Shuti also writes one devotional, giving the, the women's voice as well throughout the week. So I like it that we're diversifying some. But, yes, they could go to wisdomhunters.com, and I think they would be blessed. We just upgraded the website. Amen. Um, godly qualities of a man. Um uh, Boy, do you think that they start at home or perhaps uh, in in a personal life? You know, I do think that, uh, Greg, that I, I think the home is the laboratory for Christianity. I really do. And, you know, what we do behind closed doors as far as authenticity and being vulnerable and um, seeking to understand and, and forgiving um you know, that's kind of the anvil of life, and if if we can if we can learn these disciplines or get into good habits uh, in our homes, then then we can export that out. And you know, we always told our children um, we, we tried to use the home also uh, as a teaching opportunity, and so we we told our girls marry your best friend, make sure your heart flutters, and make sure they love the Lord more than they love you. And we would start kind of building these character traits on what it would look like for a husband. And so I dated them all through their childhood and teenage years. I wanted to model for them what it was like to be respected and honored and valued from a man and so that they would know what to look for when they were praying about God's mate for a lifetime. And so, yes, I believe the home is such a critical piece where men can lead. And and, and the other thing I tell men, Greg, is, Rita, my wife, is a lot more spiritual than I am. She's a lot more loving. She's a lot more compassionate. But she allows me to lead because she knows that's God's plan, and God knows I need to be stretched with my faith and my humility because I can't do it without him. And so I think that's another thing is men, even though our wives are probably more spiritual than we are, more mature, God puts us in that position so we can really depend on him. We're visiting with Boyd Bailey, the author of Two Minutes in the Bible for Men, a 90-day devotional. Uh, Boyd, talk to us about some biblical perspectives on areas that impact men in their careers, such as leadership, money, time management, things of that nature. I think we've all been in situations where we felt like um, our authority or our supervisor was not a good leader, and unfortunately... You know, there are cases of that where a person uses their position for intimidation um, and manipulation versus encouragement and, and um, being teachable to learn themselves. And so uh, I've always been struck by Jesus' model of servant leadership and, you know, willing to wash feet and do the things that uh, really only servants or slaves were thought to have done. And, and, and in my mind, it's, it's even one thing to to be a servant, but but to also want to be a servant and to really uh, take the team and, and really collaborate with those we work with. And, you know, when, when, we're, when we have an idea, we are better than me is what I've, I'm learning. It, it takes me a while because I'm a, I'm a decision maker. I can be impulsive. I like to get things done. But I'm learning now. We say down the south, measure twice and cut once. And I think as, as leaders, we're wise to – to really get the input of our team and to learn from one another and allow people to thrive in their expertise. And, and, and again, the example of Moses, not trying to do everything. And uh, what a great study on leadership to look at uh, the advice that Moses' father, father-in-law Jethro gave him around delegation and learning about that. And it's just a treasure trove, as you said, of information of how to be a, a good godly leader and that, that gets results but doesn't compromise the relationship in the process. One of the things that you mention very often in the devotional Two Minutes in the Bible for Men is, is the topic uh, humility. And why do you think that that is such an uh, integral part of living a godly life, humility? I really believe humility is the gateway to grace, God's grace. And he says to uh, humble ourselves under his mighty hand. So it's not a passive kind of approach. It's we literally submit ourselves to the Lord. So he says he gives grace to the humble, but then he resists the proud. And so being able to live out our Christian life in the power of God's grace versus trying to strive in my own strength. I read a book years ago called Wisdom Hunters, and I'm real good friends with the author. His name is 
um, Randall author is his name. He's a missionary, and I support my wife and I support him. And that book is a great story about a leader going from legalism to a grace-based life. But it happened through him being humbled. And sometimes the Lord has to take us through suffering to learn humility and to grow in ways that we wouldn't grow if we didn't have difficulty. And so I would just say to men and women, if you're in a trial right now and it's hard, um, allow God's Spirit to soften your heart and to teach you. And I know you it's frustrating when we can't change the circumstances or we can't change the other person, but we can allow God to change us. And so I think humility then allows us to receive the grace of God to be able to get through whatever difficulty or success that we're going through. Uh, Boyd, you also cover the biblical perspective on emotional and spiritual health. How can we counteract that very different directive our culture tends to offer? Yeah, for so many years, um, it's it's like as men, we're supposed to be John Wayne, and and, and, and I do admire a guy that's a man's man, and I and I want to be 100% man and the way God made me. But there's a skill that I think as men that we haven't learned very well, and that's how to communicate what we're feeling and be able to process our anger and be able to process our disappointments and be able to process our hurts. Otherwise, if we don't learn to process our emotions, it turns into very destructive Behaviors. So I'll give you one example. Um, five year, four, four or five years ago, Rita and I became empty nesters, and we thought, you know, we've never been empty nesters before. We need some fresh, new training, some skill sets that we don't have now. So we went to a marriage intensive close outside of Atlanta here. It, it was put on by a group called Center for Relational Care, and it was a Sunday through a Thursday. And it was the process of kind of unveiling maybe past hurts or present present hurts that have not been healed and they gave us the skills to learn how to truly confess and truly repent and to, and to forgive and I didn't realize I had hurt Rita in a couple ways over the years that I thought that there was forgiveness and there wasn't because we had not truly communicated it we had not truly emotionally processed it. and so I would just say the Bible I heard someone say this the other day that I thought was so good we can be emotional and not be spiritual, but we can't be spiritual and not be emotional. And so I think it's just critical in our relationships that we give each other permission to share what we're going through, to share our feelings, our hurts, our fears, and then learn how to comfort one another before we apply truth as we, um, as we share what, you know, we can try to help someone work through their issues. Mm. Why would you say, Boyd, that accountability is so vital in a man's integrity to God? And why do you suggest, or actually what do you suggest for someone who is not used to accountability? You know, I do believe that we do better when other people are watching. You know, it's just, um, you know, our children, when they, you know, when they know that mom and dad are in the room, they do better. And the, and as they became teenagers, we used to tell them, now, we can't follow you around everywhere, but the Holy Spirit will be with you, so you still need to be accountable, you know. Um, the other reason is uh, I just don't trust myself. Um, uh, there, there's, the, the, there, there's the flesh part of me and the spiritual part of me, and if, if I feel isolated, this is why I think, this is why I think pornography is a, a real problem, because we can isolate ourselves from accountability and with our phones or with our computers, get exposed to images that are just not healthy and they're not right. And so literally telling each other, you know, this is an issue in my life. Uh, I want you to ask me what I'm watching on my computer or on my phone. In fact, I'm going to sign up for a software that will send you what I've been, the links that I've been going to and the sites that I've been going to. So that, that I think, seems a little structured or a little rigid, but yet... It allows us to be freed up because we have some of these guidelines. And I'll give you one other example. When we were first married, I learned this from Billy Graham, to never be, we both decided, Rita and I, never to be alone with a person of the opposite sex. And that Rita has told me that has made her feel so honored and so blessed all these years. And even tomorrow, I have an appointment outside of the office with another lady in our office, but we're taking two separate cars, and she understands that, and she respects that. And so... 
I think just having these agreed upon guardrails, just like a car needs guardrails when it's going down the road so it doesn't go off the side of the mountain, it frees us up then to be able to live life within those guardrails and not be fearful or not feel guilty. Well, our guest today on Second Chances has been Boyd Bailey. The devotional is entitled Two Minutes in the Bible for Men, a 90-day devotional. Uh, Boyd, obviously, as we alluded to in the beginning of this program, this program is entitled Second Chances, and uh, there are obviously men each and every week that are drawn to this program, whether it be when we initially broadcast it or if they go back and listen to the archives of it that uh, are struggling with some areas. They want to be set free. They want to be accountable. But most importantly, they are seeking what uh, they have probably discovered by now is Jesus. And they're just looking for an opportunity to ask him to be the Lord of their life. And we would be honored if you would uh, lead us in that prayer. would love to. Uh, this is a prayer similar to a pastor that led me in a prayer when I, when my heart was tender to God. And before he prayed it with me, he said, Boyd, you're going to kneel down a sinner, but you're going to stand up a saint. So here's the prayer that I would offer to anyone listening right now. Just pray this from your heart. Heavenly Father, thank you for your great love for me. Thank you for allowing your only son, Jesus, to die on the cross for my sins and to rise from the grave. And I, I receive him by faith into my life right now for forgiveness and to be my life. And Lord, I pray the Holy Spirit would empower me to be a disciple of Jesus that can help others grow in their faith. And I pray all this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Our guest today on Second Chances has been Boyd Bailey. The devotional is entitled Two Minutes in the Bible for Men. And Boyd, one more time, if someone would like to attain a copy of this book or uh, learn more about you or uh, some of the other devotionals that you've had published. Yes, Greg, uh, wisdomhunters.com. Uh, the books are also in Christian bookstores through Harvest House pub- Publishers, and I'd love for them to go to the website. I think they'd be blessed by the uh, resources that they can access, wisdomhunters.com. Uh, book also available places like Amazon, things like that? Absolutely, yes. Okay. Once again, our guest, Boyd Bailey, the devotional, Two Minutes in the Bible for Men, a 90-day devotional. Tune in next week for more Second Chances right here from Advantage Radio Ministries on Lift FM.